Hey guys, so I wanted to kind of come to you guys tonight and just explain to you about something that kind of popped up, the big rumor, obviously, from uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, person who was talking about the fact that the system, the Switch, will be doing DisplayPort through USB-C to the dock, and a lot of people have been kind of concerned because they think that maybe it will have DisplayPort out, because they see DisplayPort, obviously, and they don't see HDMI anywhere in there, so they're concerned that... HDMI will not be compatible with this. Well, I'm going to tell you guys now, HDMI will be on the back of that dock, and I'll kind of talk you through it and explain to you what, what exactly is happening here real quick. So first, if you don't know what DisplayPort is, it's actually a, it's a pretty awesome uh, media cable, basically, and port, and it has a lot of big advantages, even over HDMI. It has locking mechanism, uh, supports everything up to 4K, 60 hertz. I know HDMI has been making a lot of ground with that by doing HDMI 2.0 and then so on. And DisplayPort has always, at this point anyway, had more bandwidth and been able to basically work better in the field of like computer monitors, things like that. That's actually where you see it the most right now. HDMI's biggest advantage is that it's on everything. Like, I mean, everything uses HDMI now. All the TVs use it, game consoles use it, laptops use it, computer, even video cards use it. Video cards also do have DisplayPort, but everything pretty much has HDMI because it has become the gold standard at this point. But during USB-C's uh, uh, conception here, where they were building it and uh, developing it, they decided to go with DisplayPort, mostly because DisplayPort is royalty-free, whereas HDMI, the port, the cables, mostly the cables actually, cables, basically the whole medium is technically royalty, uh, it's, it's, you have to basically talk to the company. It's literally called like HDMI Inc., and they basically govern their HDMI cables, their ports, things like that with what it's used in. And one of the biggest companies behind USB-C's creation was Intel. And of course, when you create something like that, you don't want to be uh, possibly hampered by another companies, especially if they are guarding HDMI closely, which they pretty much do. They, they guard it really well. Uh, cables, for example, the technology, all that stuff is covered by HDMI Inc. So what they decided to do was go with a royalty-free port, display port, which I, again has the advantages I explained to you when making the USB-C port. So display port is actually was was there when USB-C was put, being put together and everything essentially, and you have pins in USB-C that support display port. So if if you do have you opt for the display port compatible USB-C uh, port, you will have display port which a video signal essentially, audio video, through USB-C along with other things. And of course, this makes a lot of sense for Nintendo, mostly because they have that one port that they want to do. They don't want multiple ports on the bottom uh, for to kind of, I mean, you have to basically sled it into this, you know, into this dock. So the easier, the better. The fact that USB-C is interchangeable, uh, it, it's very hard to break because obviously it can go either way, like I said, and you only need one port for all of those functions. Well, at this point, we now have a dock, and I'm going to tell you now, the dock will at least have an HDMI female port on the back. That's fine. Uh, like I said, the reason USB-C uses DisplayPort is because at the time of its creation, Intel did not want to be possibly slowed down or cost more to implement HDMI going through it. It was easier just to do DisplayPort because it was royalty-free. You didn't really have to go around asking anybody to use it, so it was a lot easier at the time. And of course, Nintendo now sees that and is using USB-C in turn using DisplayPort internally. Now, when it goes to the dock, it will just be simply, it will just be converted to HDMI. Uh, DisplayPort and HDMI are easily converted to one another. It's not a big deal. And it should support 4K based on the bandwidth. That's the other thing I wanted to get into. So don't worry, uh, on the back of that dock, you will still have HDMI uh, and you also still have bandwidth for USB ports, possibly Ethernet if they want that and so on. And the other number he threw around was five gigabits per second. I saw a lot of a lot of websites reporting this as gigabytes. If that thing had a an internal bus speed of five gigabytes a second, that would be uh, uh, futuristic, I would say at best. That is that would be some ridiculous speeds right there. Uh, <laughs> and so, but no, it's gigabits. Now, uh, if you want to, for example, convert that to uh, megabytes, which most of us know megabytes, uh, in general, when you put a USB stick in your computer, you move something over, let's say it moves at 25 to 30 megabytes a second, that's kind of what we're used to. Now, basically, if you take a gigabit, that is 
basically comparable to 125 megabytes. So five gigabits is comparable to 625 megabytes at that point. And that's a pretty good internal bus speed for the Switch. Now what that's gonna give it is the ability to, okay, so internal bus speed is essentially the speed at which uh, the USB internally will move from, for example, the dock video going through out, in and out, going back and forth to the switch. Uh, you have USB sticks or hard drives possibly plugged in, if maybe you have an ethernet port on the back of that. Basically that internal bus speed is how fast it can pull data through that little USB-C connection. It's the same that like, uh, for example, you're, you have a hard drive in your laptop, uh, you have an internal bus speed for that as well, whether it be SATA 2 or SATA 3. SATA 2, I believe, runs at 3 gigabits per second, SATA 3 running at 6. And if you consider the speeds, it's actually faster than the PS4's hard drive transfer speed, because that runs at SATA 2, to my knowledge, and same with Xbox One runs also SATA 2. They recently implemented SATA 3 in the PS4 Pro. It's also worth mentioning that these uh, these transfer speeds we're talking about here these these uh, these th they're theoretical they're not they're certainly not real world. You could have awesome theoretical transfer speeds and you get literally half of it if that. I mean this thing's not going to be the switch will not transfer speeds uh, to five gigabits. I can tell you that now. But what it will do is it will give it enough bandwidth and speed to move things possibly like 4K at 30 frames. Definitely wouldn't have enough bandwidth, I think, at 60, but it should have enough for 30. And, of course, it'll do things like uh, you can plug in multiple USB sticks. It'll still pull 100 watts of power is what USB-C is rated to. So that one port is a pretty good piece of technology like I was alluding to before. So this just, if he, it, from what he's talking about, it makes sense because USB-C's, theoretical maximum is 10 gigabits per second and half of that makes sense for the switch because i don't think it's going to be pushing 4k at 60 frames i can be wrong because who knows but based on what you need for 4k at 60 frames i think it's safe to assume it's not going to be pushing that so yes guys don't worry it will have hdmi on the back it will just convert that display port signal to hdmi there'll probably be some kind of circuit board with a chip on it in the actual dock that will also support obviously the the usb ports and the HDMI uh, conversion, so you can then plug it into your flat screen or projector or whatever you're going to play it on. But that's going to do it for tonight, guys. I hope you uh, understand what's going on here with DisplayPort through USB-C to HDMI. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.